There's been a settlement in Lyme Regis since Saxon times, when the abbots of Sherborne Abbey were given salt boiling rights on the River Lim. Today, it's an historic town of just over 3,500 people. During the years, it's been involved in such things as shipbuilding, quarrying, fishing, farming the surrounding areas, and of course, fossil collecting. Since the early 1750s, it's been involved in tourism. And that is today's main economic activity. The people of Lyme Regis have spent over a thousand years trying to protect their homes against the sea. There are a number of problems that they've faced. The first one is the geology. And we're here to the east of Lyme Regis and we can see exposed in the cliffs the rocks of the Blue Lias, the lower part of the Jurassic. The rocks here are alternate bands of limestone and muddy limestone in a shale. And when they're undercut by the waves, blocks fall off and the cliff recedes. Now above those rocks, we've got the Black Ven Marls and the shales with beef very much weaker rocks, and above those lying unconformably on them are the Cretaceous greensands. Any rainfall soaks down through the greensand, waterlogs the Black Ven Marls, and they become heavy, friction is reduced and they slip onto the beach, so landslide's a big problem. As well as that, we've got waves with a long fetch right the way across the Atlantic if they're coming from the southwest, and added to that, during the 18th, 19th century, there was a huge amount of quarrying along this coastline. And they reckon that as much as between 1803 and 1830, as much as 90 foot of the cliff line was taken away because these solid bands of limestone were very, very popular for local building. All areas of the British coastline have a shoreline management plan where the government decides on the level of protection for the coastline. There are three main strategies. One is to hold the line, protect the coastline. The second, to manage retreats, where they realise that the coastline is going to erode and they will manage the movement of properties, economic um, activity inland. The third one is to do nothing and to let nature take its course. Interestingly, along this section of coastline, Lyme Regis, because of the economic and historical value, the, the policy is to hold the line. As we move east along the coast towards Charmouth, the Black Ven area, the area of Stone Barrow and um, Golden Cap, there the policy is to do nothing. At Charmouth, over the next few years, the policy seems to be to manage the retreat. For centuries, the response to coastal protection was fairly haphazard, with the people of Lyme Regis building hard engineering structures like seawalls and groins in response to the storms or the landslips that they experienced. However, in the early 1990s, the local authorities, together with government organisations such as MAF and Southwest Water, got together and developed a Lyme Regis Environmental Improvement Scheme. We're now walking along phase four of that improvement scheme. A wall built, completed in 2015, concrete wall with a deflecting lip on the outside, stabilization of slopes, uh, and the steps up to the Charmouth Road car park. From here, we can see the extent of the phase four improvement work, built at a cost of 19 million pounds. Unfortunately, it covers the cliffs where Mary Annings found her ichthyosaurs and a lot of her fossils, but it has protected the houses behind. It covers a set of groins and an old sea wall that was collapsing, which had been built in 1957, and also some shuttered concrete protection, which had been built at the turn of the 1900s to protect the church. There's been a road joining Lyme Regis to Charmouth since Roman times, initially at the top of the ridge there between the Black Fen Marls and the Green Sands. But due to regular slippages, a new road was built lower down in 1825 
and eventually by the late 1880s they had to decide to build a road inland to avoid the cliff line. This is one of Lyme Regis's oldest coastal defences, the groin at East Beach or Church Beach. It was built in 1600 out of blocks of Blue Lias limestone, flint and some Portland stone. The idea being to keep the beach in place and stop it being drifting eastwards. And the fishermen throughout the sort of 18th and 19th century certainly loved to bring their boats up on the beach. Here at Guncliffe we see phase one of the Lyme Regis coastal improvements. Constructed in 1994 and 1995, it actually advances the line. It's a dual purpose scheme with a seawall fronted by rock armouring and then a hidden storage tank and a pumping station. The front wall obviously coastal protection but the pumping station and the holding tank to enable Lyme Regis's sewage to be treated in upline before it goes into the sea as clean water. In front of us we've got the old sea walls below the marine theatre. These are composed of blue lias limestone and I can remember well in the mid-1970s the sea beating against the walls right the way along here. Little beach, a groin, a very different situation than we've got today. We can see in the old sea walls here, some of them dating back to 1600, how vulnerable they were to erosion and to weathering. They're composed of blocks of blue lias with some chert and flint at the top. You can see evidence of the chemical weathering, the physical weathering, some freeze-thaw weathering, with erosion at the base of the cliff, and they constantly had to be repaired. By the early 1900s, they decided to concrete them. So they put shuttering and concreted here. Erosion was a real problem. So the new sea walls are certainly a great asset to Lyme Regis. They've used a slightly different structure, They've used the blocks of blue lias at the base of the wall from a Somerset quarry. At the top, the Portland roach stone, a good um, building stone, and a different rock on the outside of the walls, the igneous rock, Portuguese granite, far more resistant. In addition, they've put rock armouring. Huge blocks of larvikite brought in by barge from Norway. Blocks of basalt brought in from Ireland and some of the Mendip limestone. These new coastal defences have protected some of Lyme's most important buildings. The museum, built in 1901 by Thomas Philpott and its new Merianning wing. Behind it, the Guildhall. The Marine Theatre with its variety of entertainment. And of course, the old church and the rest of Lyme. Until the late 18th century, the only way to get from Cobb Gate to Cobb Hamlet was along the beach at low tide. And then gradually, walls were built, buildings developed westwards. All the time, it was a constant battle to try and prevent the sea from damaging the walls and the buildings. In the late 60s, they put in groins and some beach replenishment. But all the time, the waves were battering up against this coastline. Phases two and three of the coastal improvements took place between 2006 and 2007 and involved a number of stages. Firstly, they cleared, drained and stabilised Langmore Gardens. Secondly, they built a new wall to the eastern side of Marine Parade. Thirdly, 
the beach replenished by bringing material in. So we've got on this section of the beach flint and chert gravel dredged off the south of the Isle of Wight. Sand brought in from Normandy on the far side. And finally, they realigned the rock armoury to the south of the Cobb and to the end of North Wall to protect the coast from those really strong south-southwesterly and southwesterly waves. Lyme Regis is a gateway town to the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Site, designated by UNESCO in 2001. It's a 95-mile stretch of coastline representing 185 million years of Earth history. From the oldest rocks at Orkham Point near Exmouth, belonging the Triassic period, through to the Jurassic rocks which appear near Lyme Regis, right the way around Portland, the Purbeck Peninsula, ending up with Cretaceous rocks at Studland in the east. The area that we are standing in was redeveloped as the final part of phase two and three. And it replaces some old shelters that were built in the early 40s and 50s. This central section was built in the 1920s. And the two new retail outlets have been put on as well. Langmore and Lister Gardens have always been unstable being located on the top of ancient landslides within the Charmouth mudstones. Hence, very little development in the area. However, in the winter of 1961-62, a property developer gained permission to put 20 dwellings on the slope. The slope was regraded, 50,000 tonnes of material were removed, and work was due to start. Then, in February 1962, the whole slope collapsed. The tow had been removed, an ancient slip plane reactivated, five houses were destroyed and a number of families made homeless. The council's response was to put a five metre concrete wall at the base of the slope, in front of which today you see Swim Restaurant, the Amusement Arcade and the Antiques Emporium. Then, in the 2006-2007 redevelopment of the seafront, all the topsoil and loose material were removed. The slope was soil nailed, stabilised and drained. And then the material brought back, gardens re-established and the hardy planting that you see today was created. Lyme Regis' most famous landmark, the Cobb, has existed since the 13th century. There are trade records since the 1250s. Initially, it consisted of wooden oak posts infilled with cow stones, taking a U-shaped form. It was one of the most important harbours for trade on the south coast during the 15th, 16th and 17th century trade gradually dying out in the 18th century. It has been changed over the years. Wood was replaced with stone, the blue lias, the Portland stone, as well as some flint and concrete in recent years. It's had to be repaired on numerous occasions after large storms and the southern arm has been extended as has North Wall and rock armouring has been attached to both ends. The harbour today is mainly for leisure, fishing and local boat trips. Monmouth Beach is a natural storm beach, composed mainly of rounded and sub-rounded pebbles, of flint, of chert and of the blue Elias limestone originating from the cliffs to the west. Some of the material also came on shore in post-glacial rise in sea level. Just as happened to the east of Lyme Regis, there was a large amount of quarrying in the rocky ledges and on the cliffs to provide lime with building material and for hydraulic cement. There was large cement works at the back of the beach. 
The general movement of material tends to be from west to east, caused by the dominant southwesterly winds. The material moves along by the process of longshore drift and for many centuries supplied Town Beach with material. However, by 1756, the cob was attached to the mainland. This stopped the movement of that material, the beach built up against the cob, and Town Beach was starved of material. Sea defences have always been important to Lyme Regis, which is so exposed to those southwesterly and westerly gales. The sea walls have protected the town over the years and continue to do so, particularly with the new developments, which have also enhanced the tourism value of the town by increasing the size of the beach and providing an excellent walkway along the seafront. Lyme Regis, often referred to as the Pearl of Dorset, has deep-rooted connections with the sea. With its varied and historical interest, its visitor attractions, its interesting architecture and being located amongst spectacular coastal scenery, it has developed into a sparkling all-season resort. Over the last 30 years, £60 million has been spent on protecting it from the ravages of the sea and landslips. As we've seen, sea walls have been built, rock armouring put in, slopes have been pinned, the beach has been added to, and over a mile of easily accessible flat walkway established along the seafront. The seafront has certainly changed over the years, and hopefully these recent works will allow Lyme Regis to be a thriving resort for years to come. Thank you.